Hi everybody. This is our first week of algebra. And in this week, we are going to concentrate on straight lines. Do you know where the word algebra comes from? The word algebra, algebra, has been taken from the title of the book, Ilm Algebra Wal Mukabla, the signs of restoring what is missing and equating like with like. The word algebra, as you can see, is an Arabic word, which means the reunion of broken parts. This word has been taken from this book. And this book is written by Al Khwarizmi. He is known as the father of algebra, the man who made possible the maths we use today. Okay, so let's see what are our learning outcomes for the week. By the end of this week, you should be familiar with the terms expressions, formulae, and equations. You should be able to calculate and interpret the gradient of a straight line and, the, and be able to calculate and interpret the y-intercept of a straight line. These are the two main features of a straight line, the gradient and the y-intercept. And you should be able to find the equation of a straight line, recognize and interpret what are positive and negative ingredients. Finally, you should be able to sketch or draw a graph for the equation of a straight line. So first let's start with our understanding on the terms, expressions, formulae and equations. Okay, so in mathematics, we often use letters to represent the unknown quantity, yeah? Algebra provides us with the basic skills to handle and manipulate expressions of the form like this and equations and formulas, which involves letters, numbers, and mathematical operations. And what are the four mathematical operations? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and divisions. So that is what algebra is. You use letters, numbers, and mathematical operation. That's all, yeah? Now let's see the difference between expression, equation, and formula, yeah? Let me clear this out. Expression, for example, as we have seen, is this is an expression. Yeah, it's got the numbers, it's got the letters, and it's got the mathematical operation, addition, subtraction, and multiplication, and division. It does not include the equal to sign. Look at that, it does not include the equal to sign. It represents some quantity we are often asked to simplify, okay? So expressions are usually given in a form, in an unsimplified form, and then you are asked to simplify it, yeah? That's what it happens. So please remember expression does not have an equal to sign. It is just an expression. You may be asked to simplify that. That's all, yeah? Uh, yeah. In max, everything should be expressed in a simplified form, yeah? When two letters are multiplied together, for example, x, y, we don't insert a multiplication sign because it is very clear here, isn't it? If we write, x, y, it clearly means that x times y. That's all. You don't have to write the multiplication sign. So you just remove it and we just write it as x, y, yeah? That's all you do. You just write it as x, y. So if you have a, b, the two letters, this means a times b. You don't have to write a times b. No, you don't have to write. You can just simply say a times b. Look at that here. You can simply say six times x plus y. That means you're multiplying six with x, adding it to six times y. 
you don't have to write a multiplication sign here. No, you just can put a bracket. Okay, so that's what I say here. We don't insert a multiplication sign between numbers and symbols or numbers and brackets for the same reason. So I don't have to write a multiplication sign here. No, I simply can use a bracket. Look at that, I, don't, I did not use a multiplication sign here. I did not use a multiplication sign between three and X. Okay, so simply you can represent it as three X. It simply means three times X. Similarly, X, Y simply means X times Y. Yeah, six times X plus Y. You don't have to use the multiplication sign. Okay. Finally, when you have something like Y, it simply means one times Y. And if there is nothing in the power, it, it's not zero, it is one. Okay, be careful guys. One times y to the power of one, yeah? Okay. Equations. So what are equation? As you can see from the word, equation means you will have equal to sign there, yeah? For example, two x squared minus three x plus seven is equal to zero is an equation, yeah? Look at that, you have an equal to sign, yeah? So here we have left-hand side. On the left-hand side, what do you have? What is that expression on the left-hand side? 2x squared minus 3x plus seven. And on the right-hand side, what is the expression? It is zero, isn't it? So what here our equation says, our equation says that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, 2x squared minus 3x, plus seven is equal to zero. That's what our equation says. Equation always has an equal to sign. Equation always has an equal to sign. And do you remember what this equation is? What is this equation called? The highest order is two. The highest power is two. So the equation is a quadratic equation. Yes, this is a quadratic equation. And it is always used to solve an unknown variable, yeah? It is used to solve the unknown variable. For example, in this case, in our quadratic equation here, we are trying to solve for the value of x, yeah? So we can find the value for the unknown variable, variable x that satisfies this equation, yeah? So whatever value you find out, you obtain, by solving this equation should satisfy the equation. That is, if you find the value of, you solve this equation, find the value of X and then substitute here, it should satisfy the equation. What do I mean by satisfy the equation? So first I solve the equation, quadratic equation. I find the value of X, I put the value of X here. And if I solve it or simplify it, I should get zero. That is the meaning of the sentence, satisfy the equation, okay? We'll see that later, okay? Okay, so now what is formula? Okay, let's see, what is formula? Formula, for example, like last week, where we did shapes and space, it's nothing but, something like this, what do we have here? We have a formula for it, for the area of a circle, yeah? It's usually, what does the formula do? It usually uses letters like X, Y, Z, all the letters from the Greek alphabet, like pi, theta, sigma, yeah? Formulas are usually used to calculate a specific quantity, yeah? In a formula, you should see that you always have the, that is for, for this reason, you always have an equal to sign. Yeah, because it's used to calculate a specific quantity. That is formula, okay? Okay, now that you know what are expressions, formulas, and equations, I want you to help me figure out which of these are formulas and which of these are equations and which of these are formal expressions, yeah? Okay, well done, guys.
So that's your T formula for circumference, formula for simple interest, formula for the time period, formula for the resistance in parallel, and again, the formula for the time period, yeah? So these are all your expressions, and there you are equations. Look at that, equations have equal to sign. Equations have equal to sign, equal to sign. Please be careful. Expressions do not have equal to sign. Expressions do not have equal to sign. You don't have the equal to sign, no equal to sign. Okay, that's the difference between expression and equation. Okay, now let's go to the two main features. First, let's see what are the gradients, okay? Okay, let's consider the equation 2x minus y minus one equal to zero, or y is equal to 2x minus one. The equation represents a relationship between x and y. Okay, this clearly lets us know the relationship between x and y. And how can we draw a graph? We can plot the points by considering some values for x and then finding the corresponding value for y. So first we had to make it, draw a beautiful table, yeah? Let's draw a beautiful table, then put some values for x, then substitute these values in this equation and find the corresponding value for y. And then you can use this to plot the graph. And what can you see? The graph is a straight line for this equation. The graph is a straight line for this equation. And what are these points? 0 comma minus 1, 1 comma 1, 2 comma 3, 3 comma 5, 4 comma 7, 5 comma 9. What are these points? They are called coordinates. They're called coordinates. Where the first point 1 is x, for example, and here 1 is y. Yeah. Here, two is the x value and three is the y value. What is this point, these coordinates represent? The first point, the first value of x represents the position of this point in the x direction. And the second value of y helps us with the position of this point in the y direction. So what does coordinate do? Coordinates just helps us show the position of the points on a graph. For example, let's take this point 2 comma 3. It simply means that the coordinates are two units to the right. They are two units to the right. Two units to the right in the x direction and three units up in the y direction. It's very important you understand this, yeah? So by looking at a point, you should be able to describe or virtually see where the point lies, where the position of the point is, yeah? So for example, if you're talking about the point three comma five, it simply means that this point is three units to the right, three units to the right in the x direction and five units up in the y direction. You should be able to virtually see this position, okay? From the coordinate, okay? You should be very good at it because it helps you in future to interpret certain situations. Is that okay, guys? Yeah, you should clearly be able to understand that, yeah? So for example, I'm just repeating it again. Two comma three simply means that the coordinates are two units to the right in the X direction and three units up in the Y direction. Very, very important that you understand that, especially when we are doing statistics, which you're going to do it in the next semester, yeah? Okay. So straight lines, 
Yeah, many business situations gives rise to the straight line graphs. So you're going to see some of those problems soon in the coming weeks. Studying these graphs in Max allows us to understand the meaning of the two main features of straight line, the gradient and the intercept, and helps us to interpret them. Then you can use it to create models for business situations, for example, for production costs and budget constraints or supply and demand equations. So this is very useful, yeah, in your future coming weeks, yeah. And you can hence use them to solve problems about limited resources. So it's very, very important that you know how to find or determine the value of gradient and, and intercept and interpret them to understand the given situation. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay, now let's see the features of straight line. For example, let's first take a graph, okay? Let's consider the graph of the same line which we just saw, okay? The straight line, as I mentioned, the straight line has two features, slope, gradient, yeah? You can also call a gradient a slope, yeah? So it could be gradient, slope, and we always represent this by the term. M. Some of may have used A, it's all right, yeah. So for convenience, let's take it as M. And the Y-intercept here, remember guys, we are talking about the Y-intercept, okay? That is the, the point, the point where the line cuts the Y-axis, okay? That is called the Y-intercept. This distance is represented by the letter C usually, yeah? So for our convenience, we're going to use M for gradient and C for the Y-intercept. These are the letters we're going to use, okay? And if an equation can be rearranged in the form Y is equal to MX plus C, you can clearly see that here the equation is represented in this form, isn't it? Y is equal to, clearly it represents Y is equal to MX, plus C, you can see that it is represented in this form, yeah? If you, an equation can be rearranged in the form y is equal to mx plus C, the equation will have a straight line graph, see? Or I can also say y is equal to mx plus C is known as the general equation of a straight line. In max, it's very important you have a general form for everything, yeah? So, for a straight line, the general equation is given by y is equal to mx plus c. Please remember this form, okay? Let me ask you one thing, yeah, before we understand what is the gradient of a straight line, yeah? Can you help me decide which of these sta stairs are steeper? Is the stair A steeper or the stairs B steeper? Good, very good, yeah? Mathematically, how do we interpret this, yeah? The stairs B is steeper, isn't it? And stairs A is flatter. Mathematically, how are we going to interpret this? So let's take this in this, in a picture form, yeah? So this is our stairs A, it looks much flatter, while you have the stairs B, which looks steeper, yeah? For convenience, we represent this horizontal movement, that is the movement along the X direction as step, and the vertical movement, the movement along the Y direction as rise, okay? So please remember guys, the movement along the X direction is step, the horizontal direction is step, along the X direction is step, the vertical, the vertical is the rise. So can you see here, for every two units along the X direction, there is a one unit rise, two unit steps and one unit rise. In this case, 
one unit step and you go up the rise, you rise up by one unit. Yeah. So stair A is flatter while stair B is steeper. And this steepness, this steepness, the gradient of the stairs is measured by gradient. And how do we determine that? The gradient, the steepness is nothing but the ratio of rise is to step. That is rise divided by step. That gives you the gradient. Okay. So let's try to find the gradient for this equation. How are we going to do that? We are going to stick on to the same example, y is equal to two x minus one. But this time we know the graph. Now we're going to find the gradient, okay? We have seen this and we are going to take the gradient of this graph, okay? So what is the rise here? Rise is for every one unit, the step is one unit. So we are moving 1.2 here. So we are here somewhere, 1.2, okay? From here to here. So one, the step is 1.2. So we move 1.2 towards x, towards right in the x direction. And then we move up. So we move to the right, 1.2. The step is 1.2. And we move up by, one, two, two point four. The rise is two point five. The step is the step is one point two, and the rise we're going up. The rise is up here. The rise is up is two point four, and the slope is two. Okay, it's always change in the y direction divided by change in the x direction. So rise divided by step. Okay, guys, it's always like that. Yeah, because we are going to. Now that we are going to find the gradient m is equal to two, yeah? So you can also say that m is nothing but the y value, change in y value, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Please be careful. You always take it either y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1 or y1 minus y2 divided by x1 minus x2. Yeah, please be careful when you are taking, you can't do this way, y2 minus y1 and then do x1 minus x2, no. It's always in the same uh, order. Yeah, you either choose point to one first or you choose point two first, yeah. The order should be same. It should be either y2 by minus y1 or x2 minus x1, okay. So the gradient is two. This is how you figure out the gradient. So gradient joining two points, consider that we have two points x1, y1 and x2, y2 and no graph or no equation is given, then how will you find the gradient of the line joining them? We have seen a formula now, we have already seen the formula, isn't it? We've seen the formula, yeah? Let's take an example to understand that. We have seen the formula here. So if you have two points, x2, y2, and x2, x1, y1, we can simply use this formula, isn't it? So we'll use the formula to find a solution for this. So we have two points here, any two points, yeah? No graph, and yeah, the graph is not given, the equation is not given. How are we going to find the gradient for the line? Simply have two points, you can, if you given two points, we can join the two points, and then what will be your step? Step will be the, point, the line which goes towards the right in the x direction and the rise will be up, going up along the y direction. So you just count the number of units here for the step and the number of units here for the rise. What do we get? So here we have used the formula the rise is, what is it? Y2 minus Y1, four minus one. So that's your Y2. And that's your Y1. This point is X2. 
and this point is x1. It's up to you guys. You can take this one as x1, y1, and this two as x2, y2. It's all your convenience. Algebra is all about solving using letters at your convenience, okay? So you can choose at your convenience whatever point you want. You can choose this as x1, y1, and then subtract, or you can choose this as x2, y2. It's up to you. You can also do this in this way. Like, for example, I've done here four minus one. You can do one, minus four, yeah, m is equal to one minus four divided by minus two minus three. So what do I get? I get minus three divided by minus five. That's also correct. This is nothing but Again, it's three by five. Minus minus cancels and it's three by five. So be careful with the negative signs, okay? Be careful with the negative signs. You can do either way, okay? Max can be done in N number of ways. That's what I tell to my students always. Yeah, max can be done in N number of ways. As far as the logic is correct, you are right, yeah? So you can do it this way or that way. Both are correct, okay? So we can conclude here that in general, yeah, in max, we need a general formula. Yeah, general formula, general equation, general, yeah. Everything general is very important, so I love that. Yeah. In general, so you can apply other things to it, isn't it? In general, given two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, the gradient of the line joining them is given by m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, or, you can also say y1 minus y2 is divided by x1 minus x2. Either way is correct, yeah? But be, please be careful with the negative sign, okay? Very careful, yeah? Please be careful with Mr. Negative. Okay, let's do, see this example. I hear I have a high chart of a child from birth to 10 years old. Let me show you the chart, yeah? Look at that, from birth to 10 years old. I'm not showing all the data points in between for each age. On the x-axis, I have age. On the y-axis, I have height of the child. I'm not showing you all the points, okay, for each. Yeah, I'm not showing you that, yeah. I'm, this is just an example to show you, okay? May not be the true height of a child, yeah? <laughs> okay, so, y is equal to 10x plus c. That is the equation of a straight line. Okay, I'm giving you the equation of the straight line here. So you have seen what is a gradient, yeah? So this equation can be represented by y is equal to mx plus c. Now look at that, it's in the form y is equal to mx plus c. I can compare this and say that, what is m here? m is equal to 10, yeah? The slope is 10. I can also find the slope from the straight line using the formula we learned, yeah? Okay, let me show you how I did that, yeah? So I take any two points on the straight line and then I can find the slope using the formula. So here I'm taking two points, like for example, I'm taking the point, what is y2 here? 90, yeah? 90 minus, what is y1 here? 70. So I'm taking these two, y2 minus y1, divided by what is x2 here? x2 is 3. And what is x1 here? Look at that. That is x1, yeah? x1 is 1. So y2, y1, y2 is? So 3 minus 1 is 2. So I get the slope. 10. So I can use the formula to find the slope. I can compare it with the general equation of a straight line and find the slope. Yeah, there are different ways, isn't it? And I can use directly from the straight line. Yeah, it's up to you guys how you figure out, yeah? So what is the physical meaning of this term, m is equal to 10? What does this mean for this example? For this example here, what I have, I have the age of the child on the x-axis, 
and I have the height of the child on the y-axis. What is the physical meaning? What do I understand by this number 10? What, do, what does it actually represent? What does this number 10 mean? For a lay person, what does this mean? He or she is given the height chart of a child from birth to 10 years. What does he or she understand from this? Yeah, it simply tells you the change of the height of the child with respect to time, yeah? M clearly explains us, M tells us the change of the height of the child with time. That is, M is nothing but the rate of change of the child's height. Rate of change of the child's height. Rate of change is nothing but the change of height divided by the time, yeah? It's the rate of change of the height, yeah? Okay, so what does this 10 mean then? 10 means that with every one unit increase in the age of the child, that is every increase in one year, as the child grows one year older, the height increases by 10 centimeter. That's all it means, isn't it? For every one in unit increase in the X direction, there is 10 unit increase in the Y direction. For every one unit increase in the X direction, there is 10 unit increase in the Y direction as you go along the X direction, yeah? Along, as you go towards the right direction, okay? So that's what it means, isn't it? For every one unit, if I go from here, let me take an easy one, yeah? For every one unit increase, in the x direction, there is a there is 10 unit increase in the y direction. That means as the child gets one year older, the child increases by 10 centimeter in height. So that is the physical meaning of this letter M. Now we have seen what is the gradient and how to calculate it and how to interpret it. Now let's see what is the y-intercept of a straight line, how to calculate it and how to interpret it. Okay, let's take the same example, y is equal to two x minus one. We know how to draw the graph using data points. Yeah, the simple way, yeah. And we will use the gradient and the intercept to draw the graph later. Okay, once you are an expert, yeah, once you know what is the meaning of the gradient, what is the meaning of the intercept, y intercept, you can use those points, those values to draw a graph. But let's stick on to the graph which we, you, we drew using our data points. Okay, the line crosses the y axis at the point 0, comma, minus 1. Can you see this? Yeah, that is where that is our y intercept. And that point, the coordinate, for that point is given by zero comma C. Okay, guys, please be careful. The coordinate is zero comma C and C is the distance from the origin. Okay. Okay, therefore for the straight line, now we know how to find the slope and how to find the gradient. Okay. Okay, let's move on now. How do we interpret this? How do we interpret the intercept? Y intercept, okay? Y intercept, okay? Let's take the same example, height chart of a child from birth, from zero years to 10 years, from zero years to 10 years, okay? What is the C intercept here? Where does the line cut the Y axis? Where does the line cut the Y axis? It cuts at 60, look at that, yes, so beautiful, 60. So that's your intercept C. Compare it with the equation of the straight line. It is C is equal to 60, yeah? Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, so that's well. So what does C mean? What does this value 60 mean? Where does it correspond to? Yeah, it corresponds to the value of x when x is equal to zero. When x is equal to zero, y is equal to 60. When the child is zero years old, the height of the child is 60 centimeters. Yes, can you, can you see the relationship? 
Yeah, when the child is zero years old, the height of the child is 60 centimeters. What does that mean? That means it's the starting value, height of the child at the birth, height of the child at the birth. When the child was born, what was the height? Height of the newborn child. Okay, so C simply means the starting value or initial value or the starting value. And that's how you interpret. C is nothing but the initial or starting value. It clearly tells what the child height of the child is when the child was zero years, when the child was just born. That's how you interpret the y-intercept. Okay. Let's look at this together now, the M and C, yeah? It's not M and S, it's M and it's C. So a linear equation, a straight line, look at that, I have used the term linear equation, straight line, may not always be represented in this form, y is equal to mx plus c. It, it may not be represented by the term, by in the simple form. Sometimes you may have to work, yeah? Sometimes you may have to work it out to bring this into this form. You may have to rearrange it. You may have to rearrange it to bring it to the general form. And it's very important so that you can find the value of M and C. In this form, it is very, it's tricky. It's not, it's not impossible. You can still find out, but you can make mistakes here. Why make mistakes when it is so easy to rearrange and put it in this form where y is the subject. We will see what is subject meaning. I think you've done it in school, but we'll see that. So why make mistakes? Just rearrange in one step. y is equal to mx plus c. y is the subject, y is on the left-hand side. You have the rest on this side. You simply can compare and find the value of m and then c. The slope, the gradient, and the y-intercept, yeah? So I would advise you all to first rearrange this in the general form and then find the value of the gradient and the y-intercept. So let's do one example, yeah? So I have this and I'm asked to find the gradient and the y-intercept. What will I do? The first step, I will surely put this in the general form, y is equal to mx plus c. I'm going to put this in this form. I'm going to rearrange it in this form to make my life easier. Why complicate my life? I'll make my life easier. I will put it in this form and then I will compare these two equations. The equation in the rearranged form and the general form. And by comparing, I can clearly see that the gradient is minus two and the intercept is one by three. Finished. And that's all, yeah? Now over to you guys. I'm showing you a temperature. Consider the temperature measured on Celsius scale and the Fahrenheit scale, okay? Okay? So I'm going to show you the temperature scale and the Fahrenheit scale. So Celsius scale and Fahrenheit scale. That's the relation, yeah? That is a standard form. I did not discover it, yeah? It's been done by already, <laughs> okay? So I get a plot of it and I'm here drawing a plot for you guys. I used an Excel to do it. Okay. Now what I want you to do is find the gradient and the intercept of this straight line. Okay, well done. Now let me go give you some more problems. I have given you some problems here. I want you to find the gradient and the intercept for these equations. First step, what is the first step? Rearrange the equation in the general form y is equal to mx plus c. Well done guys. Now, we know that the general equation for a straight line is y is equal to mx plus c, yes? Now, if we have y is equal to mx plus zero, that is I've taken c, the intercept as zero, and 
I can change the value of M and see how the straight line behaves. Yeah, let's see the effect of changing the value of M by keeping the intercept, Y intercept zero, okay? And we, let's also see by keeping the C, the M value one, the slope, the gradient one and changing the value of C, okay? So what we're going to do is, we're going to look at what happens when we change these value one at a time what happens to the straight line, okay? You'll see a beautiful relation there, okay? And then let's see what happens when lines are parallel to the x-axis and when lines are parallel to the y-axis. Because it's a beautiful relationship there and you have to understand that to figure out future theoretical problems, you know, like when we are doing the business models, other models, yeah, which you will do in the later weeks. Yeah, it's very important you understand this, okay? Okay, let's first take when M has, the slope M has different values, okay? So here you have the x-axis and the y-axis, yeah? And let me take one first, first example as y is equal to, 1x, okay, y is equal to 1x. And the straight line looks like this, yeah. And then I'm going to change the m value from one to, I'm going to increase the value of m, yeah. I'm increasing the value of m, one to 2x. Let's see what happens to the straight line. Ooh, what's happening to the straight line? the straight line, the white line. Compare this white line and the pink line. What's happening? The line is getting flatter or steeper? It's getting steeper. The line is getting steeper, okay? Line is getting steeper. Now I'm going to increase from two to three. I'm going to increase from one. The slope M is increasing from one to two, two to three. The M is increasing from one to two to three. What's happening? Is the line getting flatter or steeper? It's getting steeper. The steeper the, the line, the gradient is larger because the gradient is a measure of steepness, isn't it? The gradient is a measure of steepness. The steeper a line is, the larger the gradient, yeah? And then I'm going to now decrease M to half. Half is nothing but 0 0.5, yeah? It's 0 0.5. I'm going to decrease the value from my initial value. The initial value was one, yeah? I'm going to decrease it now. I'm going to decrease it now, yeah? The value has decreased. Look at that. What happens? The line has become flatter. It's less steeper than all the other lines, yeah? So that's what happens when you increase M, when you increase M, when you increase M, the gradient, or when you increase the steepness, the line gets steeper and steeper, isn't it? Yeah, when you increase the gradient, the line gets steeper and steeper because gradient is a measure of steepness. This is a beautiful relation. And you should be able to see that. So it helps you to interpret certain things. Yeah, certain situations which you will come across soon. Yeah. So the effect of M, you have to understand that clearly. Yeah. So as M increases, the steepness of the line increases because gradient is a measure of steepness. Now let's see the effect of C, yeah? What we're going to do is we're going to keep M constant. M is constant. We're going to keep M as one, it's constant. And we are going to change C, we're going to change C. Let's see what happens. So we're going to, have, going to change C. That's my first example where C is equal to one. When C is equal to one, look at the straight line, yeah? 
I'm going, that is, C is touching the point one, yeah? C is, that is, sorry, the straight line is touching the point one on the y-axis, okay? So now I'm going to increase C value from one to two. Yeah, the C value is increasing from one to two. Look at that. It's going to touch here. Look at that. What's happening? When you change the intercept, there's a beautiful relation here. What's happening? The line is going, moving up, isn't it? Along the Y direction, yeah? But at the same time, something else is happening. When you increase from one to two, two to five, now I'm going to, the C value is increasing from one to two to five. The line is going up and up along the Y direction, but they are also parallel to each other. Can you see the lines are equidistant? The yellow line is equidistant from the blue line at every point. Can you see that? At every point, it is equal equidistant. Yeah, it is at equal distance. It's like the railway track. Have you ever observed the railway track? It is exactly like the railway track. Why do you think a railway track is at equal distance? Why do you think a railway track is always at the equal distance? Because the railway track, the tires are at fixed, the wheels of the train are at fixed distance. The wheels of the train are at fixed distance. Oh, I have a train here, luckily, yes. I have a train here. The wheels of the, the wheels of the train are at equidistance. So the track has to be at equidistance. That is why the tracks are always built parallel to each other. Yeah, they're equidistant from each other. That's a beautiful relation, isn't it? So as we increase the C value, what do you see? The line gets, goes upper and upper along the Y direction. And what happens when you decrease, decrease it? Look at that, now the, Straight line touches the y-axis or crosses the y-axis at minus seven. It's gone below, it's gone down along the y-direction. It's gone down along the y-direction. But still, each point, if I take the blue line and the black line, they are equidistant from each other. Can you see? They're equidistant. Every part, every point there, it's like the railway track. What happens if these two lines join? It can never happen. That is intersection. For a railway track, it can never happen. Parallel lines never meet. Yeah? Parallel lines never meet. Oh, that is impossible if the railway tracks go and join. The train has fixed wheels. No, it's impossible, isn't it? So parallel lines never meet or never intersect in max, maths. You say it as they don't intersect. The two lines don't intersect, yeah? So that's the effect of C on a straight line, yeah? Now let's see, the lines parallel to x-axis. All these lines are parallel to x-axis. And what are the equations of these lines? They are y is equal to eight, y is equal to four, because it crosses the y-axis at four, crosses the y-axis at eight, so y is equal to two. At every point, y is equal to two, y is equal to zero. Look at the beautiful straight line and their equation, yeah? So in general, a line parallel to the x-axis is given by y is equal to c, where c is just a constant number, okay? It's just a number, depending on the line, yeah? When lines are parallel to the y-axis, it looks like this. They are vertical lines, yeah? Parallel to the x-axis are the horizontal lines, parallel to the y-axis are vertical lines. And the general form is x is equal to k, where k and c are just numbers, okay? Okay, now let me go back. So that understanding is very important, guys, okay? Please understand that, yeah? So we have seen how to calculate and interpret the y-intercept of a straight line. Now let's see how to find the equation of a straight line. Okay, there are three main 
problems, yeah, exam style problems. Okay, three different forms of exam style form problems for finding the equation of a straight line. So you will be either given one of these, okay? So find the equation of the straight line from the graph. The first way is to find from the graph. How will you find the equation of a straight line from a graph? Okay, let's do that. So from the graph, what can you see? You can find the gradient, yes. You can find the intercept. You can find the gradient. You can find the, you can find the slope and the y-intercept. That is the point where the straight line touches the y-axis. You can find these two values and it's finished. Simple, isn't it? In maths, the answer is hidden in the question. In maths, maths, the answer is hidden in the question. That's what I tell to my students here. Yeah, it's quite easy, answer is there. Okay, you just have to be careful. The general equation of a straight line is y is equal to mx plus c. We all know that, we have been seeing that. Now let's find the slope. For easy convenience, I'm taking a step, a large step, yeah? So four units, and then I just extend this line where it touches the y-axis, I get 12 units. So what is the rise? Rise is 12, step is four. So 12 divided by four will give me the gradient of the line M. So let's do it. So gradient of the straight line is rise divided by step, 12 divided by four is equal to three. In the exam, please give the steps because the steps carry marks. We can also see that y-intercept is minus four. Look at that, the point where the line touches the y-axis. So that's your C value. And the coordinate for the y-intercept is zero comma minus four. Look at that beautiful way of writing that, yeah? So what is the straight line equation? You just have to substitute the M value in this equation and the C value in this equation, in the general equation. So M is three, C is minus four. Substitute it in the general equation and you get Y is equal to three X minus four. And that's your equation for straight line. Okay, let's do another problem. The second way of asking, you will be asked to find the equation of the straight line where you will be given two points, just two points. You'll be given just two points, okay? So here you're given a point three comma minus two and one comma four, okay? So first we saw how to find a straight line equation from a graph. This is the, your first method. And the second method is when two points are given, okay? That's your second method, okay? Two points are given, how will you use? You have seen how to find the gradient. You know, remember the formula, yeah? So you know the general equation of the straight line. You know the formula, sorry, the my animation, okay? It is y plus mx plus c, it is going to come, okay? It's my animation. Yeah, so m is equal to use the formula, substitute the points, yeah? And then you get the gradient, yeah? Okay, let me show you the, yeah. I'm here, I've taken x1, y1 as three comma minus two. You can take whatever you want. You can take this one as x1, y1, and that one, that point as x2, y2. It's up to you guys, yeah? And substitute the points in the formula find the value of the slope. Okay, substitute the formula, find the value of slope and put it in the equation here. Okay, put it in the equation. I'm just going back. So you find the slope minus three, then put this in the equation of y is equal to mx plus three. Now you need to find the intercept. What is this? So take any one of these points, take any one of these points and put it here. So for example, you can use either of the points, any points, okay? I have taken for convenience one and one comma four, okay? One comma four, I substituted here. I put x is one, 
and y as 4, y as 4. I just substituted y as 4 and x as 1, and then I simplify it to get c, which is 7. I can do the same thing with this point. For example, I can take y as minus 2. I'm going to substitute this point for you to show you guys. Yeah, any point is okay. That's what I'm trying to tell. Yeah, is equal to minus 3 times x is 3 plus c. I can solve this. So it becomes minus 2 is equal to 3 times 3 is 9. Be careful with the negative sign plus c. This implies c is equal to 7. You can do either way. It's all right. You just have to do it carefully and correctly. Yeah, be careful with the negative signs. You can do either way, both are correct, yeah? So C is equal to seven. Now, what will you do? You found M, you found C. You can put that in your general equation. M is equal to minus three, put it here, put the M value here, and C is equal to seven, put the C value there and you get your general equation. Yeah, you get your equation for the line. So that's your second method, okay? The final third method for finding the equation of the straight line. Let me show you the third. What is, yeah? Find the equation of the straight line with a gradient and passing through the point 1 comma 4. That is, the gradient of the straight line is given, m is given, and a point is given through which the line is passing. The la point is 1 comma 4 here and m is. So you're given the gradient and you're given the point through which the straight line is passing. Okay. Okay, now how will you find it? The general equation of the straight line, you know y is equal to ms plus c. You know m, m is equal to minus two you know a point. So what can you do to find C? What will you do? You just substitute the point in the straight line. You substitute the value of M and you substitute the point in the straight line. So Y is nothing but four and X is nothing but one. So you substitute all these so you have the M value, you have the Y value, you have the X value. What is not known? C is unknown. You can find the value of C. Simple, isn't it? So one comma four, I'm substituting four minus two M and one as X and I find C. Now you can put the, all the values for M and C in this general equation and you will get Y is equal to minus two X plus C, six. That's your equation of the straight line. And this is your third style of question, okay? So you have three styles of question, yeah? To find the equation of the straight line, there are three styles of question, yeah? Okay, now let me take an example. Write an equation for the total cost. A mobile phone tariff charges 5p per minute. Here, I want you to write an equation of the for this statement problem, yeah? How are you going to do that? Yeah, so a mobile phone tariff changes 5p per minute. You're going to read the statement, understand it, and then write the equation. That should be your fourth way of writing, isn't it? So you have four styles now, yeah. So what are you going to do? First, you know that you, what can you understand here? Yeah, mobile phone tariff charges 5p per minute. Okay, and what is the rental charge per month? And 10 pounds is the rental charge per month. So you're going to start writing it in this form. Number of minutes per month. Let's take the number of minutes per month is X. Then cost per minute is 5P. So in pounds, it is 0 0.05 pounds. And what is the rental charge per month? It's pound 10. Yeah, rental charge per month. That's a fixed amount, okay? That is a fixed amount. Rental charge per month is fixed amount. 
Now you need to find the total cost. Let's say the total cost is Y. So we need to find the value of Y. So how can we write the equation? You can say Y is equal to, total cost Y is equal to 0 0.05 times X plus the fixed amount pound 10, isn't it? Yeah. So I can say 0 0.05 times X plus the fixed amount. This is a fixed amount, 10. So that's how you write an equation from a statement. So there are four ways now. Yeah, there can be four different ways. Yeah, you can be asked in four different ways to find the equation of the of a straight line. Yeah, so this is a straight line. Why, is, why do I say this is a straight line? Because it's in the form y is equal to mx plus c. Why do I say it's a straight line? Because it's in the form y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, let's move on to the next example. The Biker Bicycle Company, it's the name of a company, okay? A small local company, it's a name of a small local company, which makes specialist bicycles, okay? This company is making bicycles, in simple words, and has a fixed cost of, the fixed cost of thousand pounds. It cost, 200 pounds to manufacture one bicycle. It costs 200 pounds to make one bicycle. The following table gives the total cost for different number of bicycles made. Okay, this table gives you the total cost, which I'm giving as letter Y and the number of bicycles as X. Now your the question is, first question, find an equation for the total cost. So first you have to find an equation you know how do you find an equation from a statement now? Yeah, and the table and table is given here. Yeah, from this relation, you can find the equation. Then I want you to sketch a graph for the equation and then interpret the gradient and the intercept. Okay, that's what you see. Your job, pause the video for a while and try it out. Okay, let's see the first question. Find the equation for the total cost. Okay, let me take my video up now, yeah. So what do you do here? What is given here? What is given? The fixed cost is given. You know the cost of one bicycle and now you have to find the total cost. So let me start from here. Let me say I have X number of bicycles, yeah? I have X number of bicycles, X number of bicycles, X number of bicycles. 10 number of X can be zero, X can be 10, X can be 20, X can be 30, 40, 50, and so on. And the 200 is the cost of one bicycle. So cost per bicycle is 200 pounds. And I also know the fixed cost. The fixed cost is 1000 pound. And the total cost is represented by the letter Y, yeah? Total cost is Y. Now I have to find a relation between X and Y. How does Y change with respect to X? Remember guys, here there are two variables, X and Y. This is very important you understand. There are two variables, X and Y. Y varies with respect to X. X is the, is the independent variable here. And the cost of the bicycle depends on the number of bicycle. The cost, please listen carefully. The cost of the bicycle, the total cost of the bicycle depends on the number of bicycles. Therefore, the variable Y here is a dependent variable because it depends on X. So Y is the dependent variable, X is the independent variable. Y depends on X, okay? So the equation of the total cost can be given as Y is equal to 200 times X plus the fixed amount, the fixed amount. Fixed amount is thousand pounds, fixed cost. That's the relation here. So Y depends on X, Y is the dependent variable, X is the independent variable. 
dependent variable, independent variable. It's not the other way, okay? So that's how you get the equation. Now we have done the first question. I hope you all have got this. Now you have to sketch the graph. How do you sketch the graph? Please use your sketch paper, graph paper to do that, yeah? So what do you do? You put the data in the table form and then select the points and then draw a straight line. Join all the points and you get a straight line. And that's how you draw a straight line graph, yeah? Okay, now I just mentioned it, but I want to see whether you understand, yeah? Why is the number of bicycles on the x-axis? Why did I take the number of bicycle on the x-axis? And while drawing the graph, why did I take the number of bicycle on the x-axis? Why did I not put it on the y-axis? Why did I use number of bicycles on the x-axis rather than on y-axis, why? Good, because the number of bicycles is the independent variable. So remember guys, independent variable is always plotted along the x-axis while the dependent variables is always plotted along the y-axis because in this case, look at that, the total cost depends on the number of bicycles, okay? Okay, now how do you interpret this? How do you interpret this? What is it? Just solving this problem, you know, like just finding the equation of that and solving the problem, it's not enough for a lay person. What does it, what is it? You need to interpret it. You need to help them, yeah? You need to help them understand the situation. So we have seen that the general equation is y is equal to 200x plus 1000, yeah? And compare it with this general equation. What do you see? M is equal to 200 and C is equal to 1000. What does it mean? So M means the gradient. It means for every one unit increase in the X value, there is 200 units increase in the Y value. That is what it is. It means, yeah? Or I can say that the gradient M is nothing but when X, the number of bicycles changes by one unit, by one unit, the total cost of the bicycle changes by 200 units. Yeah, 200 pounds here, yeah. So the number of bicycle, when the number of bicycle changes by one unit, the total cost changes by 200 pounds or M is nothing but cost per bicycle. This is how you interpret the gradient, yeah? What about C, the intercept? The y-intercept C represents the starting value. Look at the, this is the starting, the fixed cost in our case, 1,000 pounds. The fixed cost, 1,000 pounds. This should be in pounds. Yeah, the fixed cost, when the, the cost when X is equal to zero, that is when no bicycles have been made, which is nothing but the fixed cost, the starting value, the fixed cost, thousand pounds. Okay, guys, look how beautiful. It gives all the information, isn't it? So this is how you interpret the slope and the gradient, the slope, the gradient, or the Y-intercept C. Okay, let's now, we have done what is, how to find the equation of straight lines in four different ways, okay? In four different ways. Now let's see how to recognize and interpret the positive, a positive and negative gradient, okay? Okay, so far all the examples what we have seen so far, the gradient has been positive. That is the gradient was moving upwards. The slope was always upwards, yeah? Let's, so that is as you move from left to right, along the straight line, you always move up. That is, when the step moved up, moved from left to right, the rise was, the rise was always up along the Y direction. Yeah, that was the straight line, yeah? Okay, like this example, like our previous example, yeah? As we go from left to right, left to right, 
For example, let me go along the x direction from zero to one, okay? From zero to one, I'm going up, rising up from minus one to one. I'm going from minus one to one. I'm moving two units, yeah? For every one unit along the x direction, I'm moving two units up. That is my slope. I have told the answer, yeah. What is the gradient of the straight line? It is two, because for every one unit I'm going from, I'm moving from left to right along the x direction, I'm moving up by two units. That is the slope of my straight line, isn't it? For this example, look at that. For every one unit I go up, for example, let me go from zero to one, I'm go going 0 0.5 units up along the y direction, okay? So in both these cases, the rise and step are both positive. Therefore, the gradients are positive, okay? So positive gradient lines will look like this, okay? So as you move along the x direction towards the, from left to right, you move up, you move up, okay? That is the step and the rise. The rise and the step both are positive, both are positive. That's why the gradient is positive. Now let me take, show you how the negative gradient looks like. We have not done any example for that, yeah? Let's do that. If the line slopes downwards, like this, the line slopes downwards, the step is positive. The step is still positive, yeah? The step is still positive, see? The step is still positive. You're going from left to right along the x direction. But look at the rise, it's coming down, it's negative. It's going down the y direction, it's negative, yeah? That is why the gradient is negative. So as you move from left to right along the straight line, you move down in the y direction. That's how you interpret it, okay? It's very important you understand that the negative rise when the slope of the straight line is downwards, that's when you have a gradient negative. Let me take the example clearly. So as I move along the x direction from zero to four, from zero, to four, as I move from zero to four, as I move from zero to four, I move down from two to zero. I'm going down from two to zero in the y direction. That is why my gradient is negative for this line. So what is the gradient in this case? And what is the equation of the straight line? Good. The gradient is, yeah, very good, yeah. So the gradient is going down, isn't it? Well done, yeah. It's negative, yeah. So for a negative straight line, you have the line going down, yeah. And when the line is parallel, we have seen that when the line is parallel to the x-axis, the gradient is zero. And the, when the line is parallel to the y-axis, the gradient is undefined. It's not defined, yeah? Okay, now we know how to find the positive and negative gradient and how to recognize and how to interpret it, yeah? Now let's... See how to draw the equation of a straight line. Let's take an example now. We can sketch the straight line of any linear equation by finding any two points. That's a simple way, isn't it? Any two points on the line by joining them. Any two points on the line by just joining them. For example, take two points and then join. For example, let me take an example, yeah. Y is equal to two X minus one. This is our traditional school style of drawing a straight line. You make a table and then you draw points and you substitute the value of X in this equation and then you get the corresponding value of Y and then you plot it in your graph. You should know this method also to draw and you have now seen how to draw a straight line using the gradient 
uh, sorry, you're going to see how to draw the straight line using the gradient m is equal to two in this example and the intercept c is equal to minus one to sketch the same, yeah? You know this, how to do this. You just plot the points and join the points and draw the line. Now we're going to see how to do this way, yeah? In this example, this the gradient m is equal to two and the gradient y is equal, c is equal to my, and the intercept c is equal to minus one simply means that for every one unit you move to the right in the x direction, for every one unit you move to the right in the x direction, you move two units up. You move two units up in the y direction. That's what it means. Yeah, for every one unit you move, in the x direction, towards the right, you move up by two units because the slope is two. Okay, okay guys, that's what is the interpretation of this, yeah? That's what you mean from the slope. Now let's see how to do this, yeah? Let's take another example because that's done for you, yeah? Let's take this example. How will you draw this? What do you, what? First, ask yourself, what do you understand from this straight line? This straight line, yeah? What do you understand? This is of the form y is equal to mx plus c. It's already of the form y is equal to mx plus c. So you do not have to rearrange it. It's already in the form. So m is equal to two, it's already there. And c is equal to minus five. So what does it mean? What does it mean with, by the term m? M is two, this nothing. This means that your gradient is positive. So how does the line look? It has to go up, isn't it? The gradient is positive. It has to go up. The gradient is positive. So as you move towards, as you move towards the right direction in the, in the X direction, as you move towards right in the X direction, by how many units? One unit, it's always one unit, okay? As you move one unit towards the right, because it's a positive gradient towards the right, what happens because it's a positive gradient? You have to go up. You go up by two units. You go up by two units along the y direction. That's what it means. Can you draw this then? Yes, you can. And c is equal to minus y. That means it crosses the y-axis at zero comma minus five. You got two clues now to draw. What is the third clue? You can find the x-intercept. That is the point where the line touches the x-axis, okay? By just simply putting y is equal to zero. You just put y is equal to zero and solve for x. What will you get? You'll get two x is equal to five and x is equal to 2.5. You got your third point, wow. Now, if you put, take any simple, value, any value which is convenient for you. I'm taking here x is equal to four. It's up to you guys. X is equal to four and you can find the value of three by just substituting it. So I got few values here and I can draw the points. So I choose the point zero comma minus five. Where is zero comma five minus five? That's my point, yeah. And then I can choose another point and then I can go up Every one unit, I had to climb up by two units. Can you see? Every one unit, I had to climb up by two units. Every one unit, I climb up by two units. And then I join the points. That's how you draw a straight line. Okay, guys, why don't you try this? But in this case, please remember to rearrange because it's not in the form of y is equal to ms plus c. You have to get the form y is equal to mx plus c, yeah? Please use a graph sheet and try this problem. Okay, so you rearrange to get y is equal to, okay, I have, my animation is poor. Let me just show the equation. Yeah, you rearrange to get y is equal to mx plus three. Let me just close this. And, and look, oopsie, I have just taken the slide out. 
Yeah, what I want to do is I want to remove the animation for this because it's confusing. Remove it. And now I'm going to slideshow. Yeah. Okay. What I'm going to show you is look at that. If you compare this, what is the slope? Slope is minus four by three and the intercept is eight. Okay, I look very tiny now. Let me make me look good. Yeah. Oh, I look better. <laughs> Okay, the gradient M is equal to minus four by three. It's clearly showing that M is negative. Look at that, M is negative here. This means, let me use my pen now. This means for every one unit, step is always positive, guys. Step is always positive. So I'll go along the right direction in the X axis. So for every one unit, I go along the X axis. I have to move down by four by three because the gradient is negative. I will move down by four by three units. That's how four by three is nothing but how many units? One point, it's 10, three, three, seven, nine. So one point, three, 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 three. So for every one unit, I'll go down by one point, three, 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 yeah? I'm going down. So step is positive, but the rise is negative because it is going down, okay? That's one clue I got. I got another clue. It crosses the x -ax uh, y axis because it's y intercept at eight. So the point, the coordinate will be 0, 0,8. And then I can find the x intercept by just putting y is equal to zero. And then I get solving that. I put y is equal to zero. Then I get minus four by three x plus eight is equal to zero which is nothing but four by three X is equal to eight. And then I simplify to get X is equal to six. I got another point. And then I can choose some point X is equal to three and find in this equation and find the value of Y. Now, let me look at this now. So for every one unit I move towards the right, what happens? I will have to go down the Y axis, yeah? Look at that. Every one I unit, I go along the y di x direction. I have to move down. I have to move down by four by three, 1.33, yeah? By four by three, this is four by three, yeah? So that's the negative gradient, yeah? Negative gradient goes down, okay? So we have seen how to recognize and interpret. And now we know how to draw a straight line. Okay, so that's all we have. Thank you very much.